Welcome to Focus on Suppliers. I'm Blake Woolsey. And I'm Jared Davis. And we are bringing you this show from the Epicenter Walmart downtown Bentonville. And you know what? Today's show is fantastic. It is all about trust. You know, Walmart announced very recently that they are going to be the world's most trusted retailer by the year 2025. And this fall, Doug McMillan talked specifically about the pillars that they're going to be following in order to make this happen. Sustainability is a pillar, as well as associates and opportunities that it provided to them, as well as just helping people live better around the globe. And it's not something we're just seeing in the stores. Walmart has made great advances online with the acquisition of Jet.com and some other online retailers to really build trust in that online space. Excited about the show because we have some really interesting conversations with our guests talking about how EDLP aligns with trust as well as packaging and even OTIF, which seems to be a very popular topic. And how does that really work in that whole equation of trust? Focus on suppliers starts now. Focus on Suppliers, brought to you by 8th and Walton, where suppliers learn fast and grow, and sponsored in part by Saatchi and Saatchi X, Case Stack, Excel Displays and Packaging, Mitchell Communications Group, and other outstanding companies. Walmart has laid out some very ambitious goals for the next few years, especially when it comes to sustainability. And my next guest is here to deep dive on a couple of these goals. Zach Fries is Senior Director of Strategic Initiatives for Walmart's sustainability team, and we're glad that he's here. Thank you so much for making time for us, Zach. Thank, thank you for having me. I'm interested to talk to you because you're right there, boots on the ground, front line. The initiative of trust and transparency, what does that mean for you and your team? Sure. Well, trust and transparency is a very important piece of, of our strategy as a company. And fortunately, I'm able to be on the responsibility team. And for us, trust and transparency is, is very important in a lot of the different initiatives that we have. And it really starts with the customer and what they want and expect out of us as a company. And so we've been uh, leading on this front and, and are going to make it a center point of our strategy moving forward to share more about how our products are brought to our shelf and the materials and the um, chemicals and all the different things that make up that product and share that story with our customers to hopefully hopefully build trust with them and and we think there's a lot of great initiatives going on in, in trust and transparency right now and and for us to tell the stories of suppliers feature great products and and really just hopefully uh, continue to earn the trust of of our customers. Now, I love you just alluded to your team. You're on the uh, global responsibility team. No pressure, just responsible for the globe. That's right. So when you think about your team and what you physically have to do to make this a reality with trust and transparency, what is it that you and your peers and your team are doing? Well, there's a lot of great projects that we're a part of, and, and responsibility is that umbrella of not just sustainability, but also our work on economic opportunity and our work in communities. And so we're a member of ten, you know, over 10,000 communities around the globe, and so it's important for us to make sure we play a, an active role in those communities and, and making them um, uh, stronger. And for us, uh, you know, building the trust of the community through the work that we do is, is, is very important. And so projects like Project Gigaton that we just uh, launched in April of 2017 is really one of those projects that ties global, uh, a global issue together through products uh, and, and global supply chains. And, you know, other initiatives that we're very proud of, like Fight Hunger Spark Change, where we've donated over 200 million meals as of 2017 through that program in Walmart U.S. And so programs like that are really strengthening the trust uh, that we have as a brand and as a retailer. And, and we hope, you know, through our story and being transparent about what we're doing, that we're hopefully continue to build the trust of, uh, of, of Walmart with our customer. How can a supplier get active with Walmart to support you in the trust and transparency initiative and then also take it to their own business? Sure, well, trust and transparency we see is just growing of importance with the customer. So it is gonna be important for uh, Walmart and it should be in company, uh, should be important for all the different suppliers that are, that are doing business with Walmart. And so we encourage those to tell their story about, uh, about their brand, about how their product came 
to came to the shelf because we think that will um, that level of transparency is, is just being asked by the customer more and more and we don't see that trend going down we actually see it increasing and so for us to be able to uh, to make sure that suppliers have the options to do that to tell their story and for instance in project gigaton there's a way to join us so you can join the project and tell us your story and it's something we want to be able to feature we want to be able to tell your story on walmart.com or other options um, to be able to help that supplier in um, being able to share their 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 message all right zach thank you so much for your time today we appreciate it thank you As we know, trust is a very complex issue, but we know it's fundamental in trying to humanize a brand. So we hope that you will enjoy listening to these comments from these leaders in the supplier community as they're talking about Walmart's goal on trust. We think you'll find their comments thought provoking. So when we first heard about Walmart's goal to be the most trusted retailer by 2025, uh, one of the first things we said internally is, I wonder how we can help, you know? And then we kind of, uh, um, sat back and we looked at the initiatives that they laid out and then we looked at the timeline again and was like, well, some of these seem really aggressive. But the fun thing about Walmart is uh, they've proven in the past that they have the capabilities to hit some very aggressive goals. And they're also great at getting the supplier community kind of fired up and uh, willing to help and come along for the journey. The way a supplier improves the relationship with Walmart is to execute OTIF at 95% to a single day. They're going to be successful, Walmart's going to be successful, and the consumer's going to continue to come back to buy their product at Walmart. I think what you see in today's retail environment, first of all, is just the importance of packaging as it relates to delivering product uh, in a manner that's recognizable for the shopper. Um, so much of their experience as it relates to what they see in the digital world and what they see on shelf has to work together. And there can't be a misrepresentation of that product. That's part of the trust. It's part of the integrity from the brand's point of view to the shopper. But look at the importance that the package is playing today in our retail environment. And is the single most compelling offer that the brand can make to the shopper in making an appeal to that, to that consumer. And the delivery um, of their brand's promise, the delivery of the transparency to that brand and that product is so important to our consumer today that the package just plays a pivotal role in bringing those two together in what should be the seamless experience at retail. I think as Walmart continues to leverage its assets and, and expand and invest in the omni-channel side of their business, they are positioning themselves to be the most trusted retailer uh, by 2025. You know, Walmart is investing and continues to invest in their supply chain. The difference is they're investing in e-commerce uh, to be able to compete with Amazon. So Walmart continues to invest in the omni-channel and offering solutions to suppliers that uh, is going to differentiate them from any other retailer in the marketplace. Trust is something that is built over time, and it's micro exchanges. You reach out to shake someone's hand, and they shake it back, and then it builds from there. And I think of trust having sort of two forms. It can be about my trust in your capability that you, that you can do what you say, and then also my trust that you really believe it, that you mean it. Um, when we're talking to suppliers recently, we've seen examples of the first form in GRS and OTIF, the Global Replenishment System, and on time in full tools, where GRS dramatically changed some of the flow of orders, but the sales were still there, and then the orders following up with that were steady too. Suppliers learned to trust that this new system would be good for everyone. Uh, sort of the same thing with OTIF and the tools, the transparency that that has brought to the supply chain, where everyone can see the issues and resolve them and work on them together. It builds on the trust between Walmart and their suppliers. In terms of trust and the belief, does Walmart really mean what they're saying? You can see that in where they're investing their resources and their time and their people as well. Uh, purchasing more from women and minority-owned businesses, U.S. veterans, made in America, investing in consistent scheduling with their associates. Across the board, you can see things that really stand as evidence to their belief in these causes. And, and those are also great ways for suppliers to support Walmart in the same initiatives. Find ways to plug into those initiatives and support them. Connect with us online. Follow Ethan Walton on Facebook. The 
The annual Walmart shareholders meeting just happened, and there is a lot to be excited about. Being leaders of the retail space, there's a lot of pressure on Walmart to evolve, and they are delivering. Let's look at some different ways they've done it. Their first smart move was to invest in their store employees by raising the minimum wage and show their commitment to getting the in-store experience right. Next, they've made some very strategic acquisitions, all linked to a much bigger and thoughtful strategy. We should all expect to see some more of these as we head into the year ahead. Next, they're using physical stores as a key strategic pillar to drive value in new ways, such as grocery pickup. This turns physical stores into a strength rather than a liability, especially when it's tied to Walmart.com, where they're making significant strides in how they use their site in conjunction with all their tools, all to drive new customer acquisition. Overall, the message from Walmart is clear. Retail is evolving and they're investing in being the leader of the evolution. So if you're a supplier, you have a great opportunity to step up your thought leadership and get a seat at the table. K-Stack, the leader in collaborative retail consolidation programs. We offer the supply chain expertise needed to navigate the challenges of selling products with the world's largest retailers. And we provide customers with a customizable, scalable, environmentally sustainable supply chain with the same advanced technology typically used by larger rivals. By leveling the playing field, K-Stack lowers distribution costs and increases overall margins. K-Stack, retail logistics is what we do. Hey suppliers, are you feeling confused? Does Retail Link have you a little frustrated? Or does your tight deadline get you stressed? Well, good news. You can get retail questions answered fast. In fact, you could do it right now. Eighth and Walton Merchant Advisors are standing by to help you. It's all from your keyboard or your phone. Chat now at eighthandwalton.com slash chat or call 479-715-6700. And with our next guest, we welcome Don Harris, former EVP with Walmart, still very involved in the retail industry. Thank you for being with us. I'm pleased to be here, Blake. So you've seen a great evolution with Walmart. Talk a little bit about where they are today. I would guess Walmart's probably encouraged with where they're at. When uh, Doug McMillan took over as CEO, he talked about going down a pathway that's, that was going to be where customers could enjoy shopping at Walmart anywhere, anytime, any how they want to, be it in the stores, online, with the mobile device. And if you look at their most current results in 2017, it looks like they're gaining some traction there. I mean, the dot-com business grew over 60%, most of it organic. They've got multiple quarters in a row of both foot traffic and comp sales growing. Same thing at Sam's, and Sam's.com is beating more and more lines. So this notion of omni-channel that we hear so much about, growing all segments of the business, trying to satisfy the way customers want to shop today. It looks like they're on the right path. I think they'd be the first one to tell you they haven't arrived, that they need to be going faster, but I'm going to guess they're encouraged with some of the things that are going on. Yeah, they always want to be moving there faster, especially That's if they know they're on the right path. How does that connect with trust? Because we've heard Doug McMillan specifically state being the most trusted retailer or even company is going to be important to them looking at 2025 to achieve that. Well, as everything else changes about how you take care of customers, and they are the boss, some of the fundamentals of how you do that can't change. And with Walmart, that's EDLP. That's my favorite topic. I've talked about this before, but the fact that you cannot drive your, resist the temptation of driving your business in short-term promotions and instead just take all that inefficiency out and get to the best price you can every day, whether it's on a Wednesday afternoon or a Sunday afternoon or whatever it may be, really does inherently build trust with customers. I mean, think about the way a customer might think about Walmart. If they know they're going to get a great price every single day, that value is there. You do, in fact, build trust that you don't have to wait for a sale or wait till a, any kind of gimmick comes along that Walmart's going to give you a square deal all the time. And whether that's in the, in the stores or in the clubs or online or through your mobile device, building that trust through EDLP is the key to everything. What would be your direction for suppliers? So you've talked a lot about where Walmart and Sam's Club are evolving. How does that apply to the supplier? I think I'd, I'd work on a couple of things if it were me. Number one, how, do we, how are we doing in each part of that omni-channel? For example, the online assortments have grown. So have we grown with that? Are we offering everything that the, that the digital world wants? While at the same time, they're getting more efficient in the stores. They're growing sales with less inventory. So skew rationalization, in stock, must arrive by dates, all those things become important. They're a little bit different. 
Same thing for Sam's and Sam's.com. So I'd look at each one of those buckets and say, are we positioned correctly for each of those? Don, thank you. Really good information for our viewers. Thank you for being with us. My pleasure. So after all of the excitement and celebration at shareholders, we wanted to continue the conversation about Walmart and what we have heard. So joining us today is Jeff Amarine with Startup Junkie. Thank you for being with us again. Oh, it's great to be here. So we've seen a lot of change and some might even frame it as disruption by Walmart, especially with their acquisitions. Yeah, there's actually been six acquisitions. One of those is still in process, rumored to be in process, but it's included Obviously, the big acquisition with Jet.com, ModCloth, Moose Jaw, Bonobos, Hay Needle. There's been a whole variety of acquisitions. All of those have been relatively small, aside from Jet, under $100 million. So, why? But why? Well, so, so that's, that's the question. That's really the, the important question, maybe an existential question for Walmart. I, we think that the reason is they're acquiring great brands that have interesting customer demographics and also the talent. They're looking at having the agility and the talent that can really help them move to the next level. So with this actual new talent that's coming on board, how do you think that's going to be able to help Walmart? I, I think it would be a fundamental understanding of the millennial uh, customer. Higher income, higher wage rate, uh, more interested in, in brands that resonate with that demographic, which is not typically who Walmart has served up to this point. So with all of the changes in leadership and management in technology, what are we thinking about for Walmart looking ahead? Kind of an age old scenario with large corporations as to whether or not to have centralized information technology groups or to have more of a federated model. A federated model allows these individual business units to be more responsive to the customer and to the needs of the business unit. So this most recent transition we've seen, I think, is exactly along those lines. And it should position them to make sure that they're rolling out the technology and the services they need to really serve the customer better. What are some big wins that you think that they might already be experiencing and already being able to share with um, analysts as well as shareholders? It's a good question. I think one of them is you can see the influence that the Jet.com culture is already having on the organization in terms of making sure that they can continue to increase the size of the basket. Jet has an advantage over Amazon in that regard. They address a higher income, younger, more professional audience. They also attract, have no trouble attracting the best and brightest talent. All those things I think are important to Walmart overall as a strategy. So as we are seeing that shopper grow, that digital shopper grow, what is it, about 15% of overall shopping today, they, they were saying in some of the latest uh, data shared. How is Walmart gonna be able to continue to increase that percentage? I, I think part of it is it's got to, there's gotta be a coolness factor that you get with Jet, given the history of the company and given the leadership. So I think that's a big piece of it. I also think for hard goods, there's gonna be significant interest in buying those through online. Food is always gonna be something, it seems like there's gonna be an interest in doing live, but for hard goods, you want those delivered to your door. Certainly, absolutely, that you want them and you want them fast. Exactly right, without <laughs> a hassle. I, it's what I forgot to get and I need it soon because it's a gift or it's something I need for a project that I'm working on. Precisely. Yeah, so with the acquisitions, with new leadership, and of course, um, in some cases, new technology, new products, with this underpinning, this whole theme of trust, how is that going to help Walmart in building loyalty and trust with a customer? The brand has historically and most recently had challenges with some of the younger segment, people in more metropolitan areas and whatnot. If they go to a federated model where these brands, it's almost like Berkshire Hathaway, are associated with Walmart, I think some of that conveys over a period of time. Mod cloth, uh, Moose Jaw, Hay Needle, all of those are brands that resonate with a younger audience. So if they, can, if they can do the same sorts of things that Berkshire has done, where it's a collection of related brands, that might be just the strategy they need. Great. Jeff, thank you. We're grateful for you being with I'm us. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. And we'll be right back. Don't miss our new fun podcast, the 8th and Walton Conference Call. You already know millennials are shaping retail's future, but do you know how they're driving your growth? Millennials are early adopters of new products, and those products must meet their specific needs. For insights on growing your business, visit iriworldwide.com insights. 
Single Parent Scholarship Fund of Northwest Arkansas is pleased to honor our scholarship recipients and supporters at the Spark of Hope with special guest speaker Barrett Baber. Through community support, we're creating better, brighter futures for determined single parent families. The Spark of Hope is sponsored in part by Pinnacle Foods, Listerine, Cox, KNWA, Cityscapes, and these fine local businesses. Visit Single Parent Scholarship Fund NWA.org for more information about how you can help ignite a spark of hope for single parent families in Carroll, Madison, and Washington counties. All Estel Attorneys at Law, with seven offices nationwide, including Northwest Arkansas, we are a full-service business law firm assisting clients with their corporate, employment, and real estate legal needs. For more information, visit hallestel.com. What if you created a town today? What would that town stand for? What matters and what would stand out? And where would you find this new town? Bentonville, Arkansas. Visit Bentonville a new American town. Hey suppliers, are you feeling confused? Does Retail Link have you a little frustrated? Or does your tight deadline get you stressed? Well, good news. You can get retail questions answered fast. In fact, you could do it right now. Eighth and Walton Merchant Advisors are standing by to help you. It's all from your keyboard or your phone. Chat now at eighthandwalton.com slash chat or call 479-715-6700. Shareholders' time in Northwest Arkansas is a great reminder that retail really is an international business. And Walmart being an international company, all eyes are on us right now. And it's kind of fun to find the pulse of retail around the world. Nobody knows that better than my old friend, my next guest, Mr. Tony D'Onofrio from Tyco Retail Solutions. Great to see you again, my friend. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here with you. Like I said, you've got your pulse on retail globally. What are the trends that you're seeing now outside the States? Well, it's globally, uh, retail is an exciting because everybody loves to shop and the more and more of a middle class is growing in all parts of the world, especially in Asia. But from a mega trend, what we're seeing, is, what I've seen is that retail has evolved through three major mega trends. The manufacturer really was in charge of the retail channel prior to the 1970s when the barcode was invented and he walked into stores in the middle 1970s, actually 1974, that really transformed the retailer into being in power because they had the information of exactly where things are being bought. That we are now in the middle of actually the next major mega trend, and that's really the consumer walking in the stores with devices and connected to things like the internet, and even having things like Fitbit and other devices that connect them to information, and they're able to make better and improved decision on a go-forward basis. So we're in the middle of really of dramatic, dramatic changes where the consumer is really in charge, and to me that sets for a very, very bright future for retail going forward. Now, speaking of the consumer driving trends and the internet, I read one of your articles that was the first time I'd ever heard of Singles Day. If you'd asked me the biggest online shopping day, I would have thought Cyber Monday, but tell us about Singles Day worldwide. Well, Singles Day is an industry phenomenon. It actually started out as a prank on college campuses in China. And really the singles people say, why should all the Valentine people have all the fun? So they say, let's on a single day, let's go buy ourselves a bunch of gifts for ourselves. And it was November 11th in China, and in one single day, Alibaba generated $18 billion in 24-hour period. And it became a global phenomenon because the shopping was not just taking place in China. To virtual reality, Alibaba actually set up shopping in places like Macy's in New York. It was an amazing process. And again, it portrays a very, very bright future for retail going forward. And then Tony, really quickly, over the next couple of years, three to five, what are you excited about in terms of security? Well, security to me is going to continue to evolve. It's going to continue to get smarter. It's going to get predictive. It's going to actually help the retailer to make decisions. It's also going to get ingrained more into the operation itself. So it's going to be part of running a store. Always great to see you, Tony. Thank you so much for your time. Come Thank back you. anytime. Thank you very much. Hi, and welcome to the heart of business in Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Don Harris. And isn't it a great time to be part of this Northwest Arkansas community? You, you see what's happening with the infrastructure and the growth in business and the restaurants and the arts and entertainment and everything that's going on, not the least of which is a big building that's going up next to the Arvest Ballpark in Springdale that is a real game changer for Northwest Arkansas. 
It's Arkansas Children's Hospital Northwest, which is a compliment to the children's hospital we've had in, Ar in Little Rock all this time. And I've got two people very close to that project with me today. I've got Tricia Montague, who's the chief administrator, administrator for Arkansas Children's Northwest. And I got my friend Celia Swanson, longtime executive at Walmart and Sam's, and also very engaged in the local community today, as well as with ACH. That's right. Thank you both for being here. Thank, Thank you. You're welcome. Our pleasure. I'll bet our audience is just dying to know what's happening with the hospital. How's it going? When's it going to open? What, what's going on with that? Could you share with us? I'd be happy to. Thank you, Don. That's really one of my favorite things to talk about. So it's going really well. That was a fast-paced project. Once we committed to this, we wanted to move quickly for this community. So we are on time to open in January 2018 uh, with inpatient service, outpatient service, ORs, and ED, etc. Really, as you said, a game changer, something transformative for this community, families and kids. And what a compliment to the wonderful facility we've had in Little Rock for this state has been so blessed with the work that this hospital has done. It's just fantastic. And That's right. Celia, you've known that for years. And we were talking, and you mentioned that the biggest hospital fundraiser that, that happens happens in this, this summer right here in Benton County. That's right. August 3rd and 4th, it's Color of Hope and Will Golf for Kids. And the combination of those two events is the largest fundraiser for Arkansas Children's Hospital in the state. So we've been giving back quite a bit out of our region, but now it's all focused on fundraising for the new hospital coming in Springdale. It is so wonderful. That's right. Could, could you tell us a little bit about what makes Arkansas Children's so special in this, in this region of the country? Sure. Well, you know, a children's hospital is is truly transformative for a community once you bring it in. Um, the experience for children and families in a children's hospital versus being a child in an adult hospital is hard to imagine until you experience it yourself. But as a pediatric nurse, I've had that conversation over and over again with families who, once they experience that, don't really go back. We are also, we are hiring, I'm recruiting about 40 physicians to bring into this community. Wow. So talk about transformative. I'm bringing in pediatric specialists in cardiology, um, ear, nose, and throat, general surgery, endocrinology, all of the things that you can imagine that kids need, as well as more general pediatricians, um, emergency room physicians. That makes a big difference for kids if you're taken care of by mm -hmm. a pediatric emergency medicine physician. Celia, you know, it takes money if we're going to take care of our kids no matter what position in life they're That's at. That's right. Um, how can the retail community get involved with helping? Yeah, thank you for asking. There's so many ways. Number one, we're close to getting our funds raised for the capital campaign. But a capital donation and or from your corporate or individual leaders is one way. Second is volunteering. So many volunteering opportunities in the hospital. Third, in-kind donations, which really matter to the way we can care for our kids. And also attend our events, such as the Color of Hope on August 4th. We hope we'll see you there. But any way that you and your family can find that's personally meaningful to you, we encourage you to connect with the hospital. It's truly exciting, and there's so many ways to be involved. I, I'd like to share a quick personal story. I, uh, Arkansas Children's Hospital saved my son's life uh, he was born with a catastrophic heart problem, ended up having a heart transplant. Today, he's 29 years old, getting ready to be 29 years old. So many of you, I know, you, your families, your extended families, your friends, your neighbor, people in, in your community, you know of those exact same stories. And we have to have a facility, or facilities in this case, that will take care of our kids. It's so important. What's more important to make sure our kids have the chance to get off on the right start if something happens? So it really is important, and what's going to happen right here in Northwest Arkansas. It's a big deal. It's a game changer. It's really important. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on The Heart of Business in Northwest Arkansas. Suppliers, get the latest retail news 24-7 at Walmart News Now. Walmart announced new on-time and in-full deadlines for suppliers. Set yourself up for success and improve your OTIF score fast with 8th & Walton's OTIF training. Register today at 8 slash O-T-I-F. Our guests enjoy staying at the 21C Museum Hotel and hosting dinner, meetings, and product launches there. 
lots of good discussion on trust. Absolutely, and I love how everyone is focused on trust from their own vantage point to support Walmart. When I talk with Tony D'Onofrio, I love Tony from Tyco. It's neat to hear how the whole security aspect is transferring from online to the in-store shopper because that makes or breaks your whole experience. And Jeff Amarine from Startup Junkie talking about the acquisitions and the strategies likely in trying to build trust, particularly with the millennial generation. And Walmart has set this very aggressive goal of becoming the most trusted retailer by 2025. I think they're going to need that time. I think they can pull it off, but that is a tall order when you have so many locations and your audience is so vast with so many formats, whether it's in-store, online, becoming most trusted. It's going to be incredible to watch them pull it off. Customer service will be incredibly important in that process as well as consistency, but we also know humanizing the Walmart brand. Who really are the people standing behind that brand is going to be important, and Doug McMillan is already out there making that happen. We'll see you next time.